Right, we have gone through the layers of physical data link network transport session presentation and application and as I say um, these layers are going to structure and inform our uh, discussions from here on in in terms of uh, telecommunications. Um, we will be spending more time on some layers than on others. Uh, networking, for example, and certainly application is, is going to get a lot of time. Uh, so, um, but we'll start with the physical layer. Now, um, this is... Uh, it is unfortunate that uh, people are not really looking at the physical layer these days. Um, we, we, you know, the interesting stuff as far as uh, most people are concerned is happening at the higher layers and particularly at the application level. Um, I think that's a mistake uh, because understanding what's happening at the physical layer, um, understanding uh, what a bit stream is at the physical layer, what you need um, to modulate, what you can read, what you can use to transmit data at the physical layer is significant in terms of protecting against it, in terms of ensuring the availability. Now, as I have said before, um, it is at the physical layer, we aren't actually transmitting any data. We are only signaling. There is physical signaling. And we, that is, that is analog. That's not digital. That's uh, not dealing with any data, but we have to find ways to modulate um, various aspects of uh, the signaling that we're doing in order to represent data and, and therefore uh, transmit, receive um, the, the data. Um, uh, well, this will get kind of interesting in a, in a few minutes here. Um, well, uh, analog signaling only allows us amplification. So if we're transmitting over a long distance, the, the signal is going to degrade. It's going to fall off. That's, you know, a uh, factor of being in the physical world. Um, and when that happens, we want to boost the signal. Uh, we can amplify an analog signal, and, and so we can boost it. But at the same time that the signal is degrading in amplitude, it is also degrading in terms of accuracy, integrity, in, in terms of um, how the... Uh, the modulation, the, you know, the, the purity of the signal and therefore the, the accuracy of the data, um, is uh, being carried. And, and so there are impurities, there are uh, glitches in the signal, and there's nothing we can do about that if we are just doing amplification. And so um, very often at the physical level, um, when we are transmitting data over long distances, we are actually converting the analog signal to digital so that we can use that to reform the signal again in order to make sure that we're not introducing error into what we are transmitting, the, the signaling that we're doing. We're actually recreating the signal by converting it, demodulating it um, into 
uh, the the data that was originally used to uh, to form the analog signal, and then using that again to to reform to form all over again an analog signal which is going to carry that data. Uh, we, you know, there's, there's various ways that we do this. Um, there is the modem, uh, modulator, demodulator. Well, uh, actually, everything that we use has to be, in a sense, a, a modem. Uh, although, you know, we get different types of, of modems uh, with the different types of signaling that we're doing. Uh, so we modulate the data into an analog signal, and then we demodulate it on the other end, we get the data back. Um, and as I say, you know, when, when we're doing uh, long distance uh, transmission, sometimes we're, we're demodulating and then modulating again uh, to boost the signal. Um, so we've, we've got that, uh, the, the modem. Um, we have various ways of modulating and demodulating. Um, uh, DSL, um, digital subscriber line, um, it was uh, highly favored um, a few years back. Uh, not so much anymore. Um, well, with, yeah, uh, it was interesting. Uh, one of the most popular ones was ADSL, asynchronous uh, digital subscriber line. And the, um, uh, the people... Uh, <laughs> a lot of people didn't understand it. I remember one guy who was given the task of, of getting us a connection to the Internet, and he decided, um, yeah, this was, this was going to be good. Uh, we would just go for uh, DSL. Uh, unfortunately, he uh, didn't understand this asynchronous bit, and I pointed out that, you know, it was always... Um, uh, you know, it was easier to feed us data than than for us to send out data, and uh, we were running a website, and so we wanted to have the uh, you know us pushing out data. Um, uh, you know, we what we got in was going to be you know very small requests. Uh, and he was, you know, perfectly, you know, prepared for that. He said, oh, no problem, we'll just get two of them. Well, unfortunately, the physics of the thing didn't work. Uh, it's always, it's easier to push data at you from the, the telco than to, to have it. Anyways, there's that. Um, we've got the cable modems with uh, um, cable TV. Um, there was microwave. Uh, that was really interesting in, in terms of the uh, uh, companies that would provide cable TV service uh, via uh, microwave, which uh, <laughs> came up with a, a very interesting uh, term called uh, wireless cable, uh, which seemed internally self-contradictory. But anyway, um, yeah, so there's, there's different things uh, that we can do with that. And I guess we'll, you know... Uh, get into how we do this um, a little bit more in, in the next video.